Hi, everybody. Long time no see. I really miss these regular meetings with you, and I'm glad to be jumping back in the saddle. If we haven't met before, I'm Kelly Houston, a registered dietitian and lactation counselor. I help people of all ages and genders eat for fuel, eat for fun, and eat for life. Taking a look, my last video was way back in December of 2020. What's been going on since then? I've been very busy with clients. COVID really impacted people's eating habits, whether they were eating more because of stress, less structure in the day, or that there was literally nothing else to do, or eating less due to high anxiety and fear of being called out for getting the quarantine 15 weight stigma, which is not helpful for anyone of any size. At any rate, thankfully, many people were seeking help, finding more balance with their eating patterns and working to grant themselves a bit of grace. This week of February 21st through 27th, 2022 is National Eating Disorders Awareness Week. Aside from opioid addiction, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental illness. Rates of eating disorders have skyrocketed during the pandemic. So I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about some of the symptoms that someone with an eating disorder might exhibit. Things that in the right context, would be, they could raise a red, a red flag for me during a session with a client. Please note that just because someone might have a few of these symptoms, it can be pretty general. So just because one or two match does not mean that someone has an eating disorder. So now that we have that out of the way, here are some examples of eating disorder symptoms, how they might present in an individual. Thinking about food for three quarters of waking hours or more. So studies have shown that someone who experiences anorexia Nervosa might even dream about food. So they're classified as thinking of food for greater than 100% of their waking hours. Feeling out of control with food. Out of touch with hunger and fullness. So this could look like not feeling hunger until they are starving, which then could lead back to feeling out of control with food due to primal hunger or eating a large amount of whatever is most accessible because your body feels like it's starving or it could look like not feeling a pleasant fullness but rather a Thanksgiving dinner, over full, oversaturated feeling. A lack of flexibility when things change. So you think you're hitting a chic bistro for lunch with a friend, or you know you can get salmon on a bed of wilted greens. But when your friend picks you up, she'd rather get pizza and you cannot eat pizza. It can also present as all or nothing thinking. So if you cave and have one cookie, your day is already ruined and you might as well eat the whole box. Loss of menstrual cycle. Obviously this one is gender specific and there can certainly be several reasons for this. So if you're missing your cycle twice in a row, it's best to call your doctor. Rituals around food, things like cutting food into teeny tiny pieces or taking a certain number of bites each time you're chewing food um, can be symptoms. Body checking. So this could look like trying on a pair of pants that you had since high school or before your first baby to see if they still fit. It can also be pinching your skin with your fingers or constantly looking in the mirror to make sure you look okay. Low blood sugar. So symptoms of low blood sugar could be feeling hangry, shaky, dizzy, a headache, feeling nauseous if you haven't eaten it for a while. Again, this can have several causes. So if you experience this regularly, please check with your medical provider. GI issues, especially acid reflux and constipation. Acid reflux occurs when the lower esophageal sphincter becomes weakened or stretched out. It can get weak when the body takes in inadequate calories for daily living. So in like anorexia, when there's a lot of restriction going on, those muscles can atrophy. It can get stretched out in clients who regularly purge through vomiting or who ruminate their food. Constipation can occur if there's not enough in the gut to keep it moving, either because of overall volume of food throughout the day isn't enough or because people are eating infrequently, so there's not a consistent push forward. Other factors like inadequate fat intake, fiber, and fluid can also contribute to constipation. Poor performance. This can take place on the sports field, in the classroom, or at work. If our glycogen stores are depleted, or if our body has to break down our own muscle for energy, we'll lose our athletic edge. If our brain doesn't get enough glucose, we can get foggy and have difficulty concentrating, which can cause our academic and creative performance to suffer. Poor sleep or waking up hungry overnight. I talk about this in my three video series on sleep and dieting. A short recap, imagine if you're in a hunter-gatherer tribe. There's a drought and you haven't come across a herd in weeks. You're sleeping, but one, your brain will keep one ear open in case a herd decides to roam by. If your body is lacking food and thinks it can get it at an irregular time, it will do what it can to get nutrition. 
finally, the last symptom that I'll mention today is purging. Oftentimes, purging is thought of in bulimia nervosa in the form of vomiting. However, other methods of purging or ridding the body of food or calories can be used. That can, can include burning off calories eaten through exercise and the use of laxatives. Side note, use of stimulant laxatives as a method of purging can lead to dependence on those products, damage to the intestines, and electrolyte and fluid imbalances. Please talk with your doctor if you've been using stimulant laxatives as a purging mechanism. Of course, this list is not all-inclusive and having a symptom or a few symptoms on this list is not diagnostic of an eating disorder. And not everyone with an eating disorder will have all of these symptoms. This is just a general brief review of some symptoms you might notice in yourself or someone else who has an eating disorder or at the very least disordered eating. If something on this list was triggering to you or you wonder if you might have an eating disorder, please reach out to your medical or mental health professional. If you want help balancing out your nutrition or getting help for an eating disorder, please feel free to reach out. You can email me at hello at kellyhoustonrdn.com or schedule an appointment at kellyhoustonrdn.com schedule. Take care and see you next time.